Welcome to Art for Film's Sake. I'm Stephen Reed, and this is The Burning by Phantom City Creative. One of the many reasons I love film posters is that they can promise so much. A single composition can set your imagination on fire and send your anticipation levels through the roof. It's basically their raison d'etre. To intrigue you, delight you, compel you to break open the piggy bank and meet the price of admission. When I first laid eyes on this amazing poster, I was stunned. I mean, just look at it. That horrific, deformed figure looming over a river of blood. The canoes heading towards the blades of those garden shears. That magnificent title treatment and credit block. All of it brilliantly brought to life with those sinister brownish-grey hues and spectacular vermilion. If ever there was a poster that screams, you have to watch this film, this is it. Honestly, I'd never heard of this 1981 slasher film. It never crossed my radar before. I had to track it down. And boy, was I disappointed. The Burning, by anyone's standards, is a bad film. The story is pretty standard fare. Unlikable person is the victim of a prank gone wrong and then returns to exact revenge on innocent victims. Oh, and it's set in a holiday camp for kids. Sound familiar? An unoriginal story isn't the biggest crime in filmmaking, but bad acting, oh, tiger, stop that. awful dialogue, I'm gonna tear you up so bad, your own mother won't recognize you. Bizarre camera work. And amateurish sound design render this film pretty much unwatchable. To be fair, some of the deaths are quite well done in a comical sort of way. So, should I be upset by this poster? Annoyed that it has sold me a lie? On the contrary. Because, despite the film itself, I can still look at this poster and get that same feeling of excitement and joy from the way it sparks my imagination. The way that Phantom City Creative have brought the killer to life is gloriously terrifying. The contrasting light and shadow echoes a classic cinema lighting trick, often used in horror films to give the protagonist an unsettlingly sinister look. That shadow has allowed Phantom City to then use that orange glow beautifully rendered as mist rising from the forest below to give us a horrifying glimpse of the killer's disfigured face. It's deliciously creepy. And there's something equally chilling about the way he hunches over the scene below. 
he wields those bloody garden shears with such macabre intent, you can't help but recoil in horror. And then you follow that dripping blood as it creates that pleasingly S-shaped river upon which the unsuspecting victims innocently navigate in their canoes, paddling their way to a gruesome death. And propping it up is that superb title treatment and credit block. The way those flames flicker menacingly out the top of the title whilst ascending almost uniformly up to the left balance perfectly with the justified right credit block. The whole composition is so wonderfully and effortlessly balanced that you could almost forget the blood-curdling chaos and carnage that is on offer here. It all fits together so well. What we are looking at is a masterclass in film poster design. A poster that promises a classic piece of slasher cinema. When a poster is this good, it doesn't matter how bad the film is. Thank you.